Welcome to the SA2K show. This is Ron Moore along with Bushido Blade Warrior and a special guest, Zombie JLT1. How's it going? Pretty good. Pretty swell. <laughs> All right. And so, yeah, I wanted to interview a zombie this time. And a zombie is someone who has been on YouTube actually for a whole minute. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself there a little bit? Sure. Uh, I came into YouTube probably right around the time that YouTube started. Uh, gaining some momentum and originally my channel started as a means to advertise my my pixel art using lego bricks because at the time i was trying to get an internship with lego to release my own kind of 8-bit pixel art line and they they wanted some i guess uh, either they wanted some kind of photo or video of some of my work and using their program I was actually downloading, uh, or not downloading, I was using to design my own models to try to make them video game accurate. And most of my old videos at the time consisted of step-by-step -step guides on how to build certain characters, what colors I used, and if you wanted to order the colors specifically from LEGO, the videos end with a price guide to kind of show you how much you would have to pay for everything in the video. So that way you didn't have to go out and spend dozens of dollars on on tubs and pieces you don't need and after that kind of fell through i took a hiatus from from doing videos and then about two maybe three years ago i came back to do some more youtubing and streaming for the first time and that's pretty much where my channel's been ever since okay that kind of answers my first question i was going to ask you what made you decide to start youtube uh you talked about your lego projects and your uh possible possibility of working for lego and so here in rec recent years i believe you've just been mainly streaming is that right yeah uh i started mostly with uh streaming and then uh, i got into well first i got into doing pickup videos again basic raw videos with my cell phone and just kind of doing pickups letting people know that uh, I, I'm a collector, I do restorations, that sort of thing, and being motivated by all you guys out there who had already been in the streaming scene, you know, it kind of got me thinking, I wonder if I could do that. And with with some luck and a bit of help, uh, we were able to get some streaming equipment, and we're hoping to improve that, as well as our videos and editing, because we've really started to take off with those projects. So I kind of wanted to get into the streaming scene a bit, but then also keep making more of our content and, and just let everybody know that we're we're back and we're doing a variety of different projects. Yeah, and that's all we que the questions we have. Thank you for joining us. Good night. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no, um, so and I wanted to ask you also, where did you come up with the, zo the, the zombie, the name Zombie JLT1? Oh, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, I I get asked that question quite a bit, and I've I know it's become more of a brand as opposed to what my my YouTube name was. But originally, uh, my name started as kind of a irony towards YouTube because when I discovered YouTube and I was watching it regularly, just to to kind of watch all the old shows and commercials I loved as a kid. Uh, I came up with the name Zombie because I knew that myself and others I knew who knew what YouTube was were going to become zombies to it. Just like what they used to say about television back in the 50s. Oh, it makes a zombie out of you. So yeah. my name actually came about because I knew what YouTube was going to do to me and to everybody I knew who watched it. Yeah. Especially me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or a, 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 a streaming zombie. Right, exactly, because back when I was streaming every Sunday, we always went at least minimal seven hours. Yeah. So it was like a whole day's worth of work in one day of streaming. Yeah, I remember that, like seven or eight hour streams, and that's how I can't really, I mean, I, I can do those, but like I have to do it where I'm away from the stream, like the, the stream footage will play on its own, or the, the game will loop over and over again and regenerate uh, fighting matches mm -hmm. or something. I can't actually sit in front of the computer and interact for eight hours with breaks in between. I don't have that much free time anymore since I got married. <laughs> and so, 
And yeah, so, I'm sure that'll change for me too. <laughs> that, that's why I haven't done charity streams in a while because when I did charity streams, I wanted those to be at least eight hours with maybe like three different mm -hmm. games. And I don't know when I'll have that much free time anymore to do that. Yeah. If I do a charity stream, sure, I can do one, but not, not the style I want to do it. I, want, I don't want to be where I'm away from the computer or whatever. I really want to be there and interact the entire eight hours and, of course, take breaks. Uh, mm -hmm. during those eight hours and like next month i got the 14th anniversary live stream i want to do I, I want to be at least eight hours but that one i might have to kind of treat it like a, a chill stream be there when i can if i'm not there oh well at least there's game footage for you guys to watch right and right indeed so because i can't be there as much as i would like i'm going to talk to my wife see if she'll if we could work out some sort of schedule where i have eight hours that day free to stream, actually play, interact with you guys for eight hours, but it's it's that's kind of hard. I mean, unless it's your job to stream eight hours, like and interact with the audience for eight hours. I mean, that that's kind of hard to do because uh, not many people have that much free time to do that. Even if, when I was single, living alone, I didn't always like to stream for eight hours and interact for eight hours. Mm -hmm. There was a time where I actually did do a charity stream. If y'all remember, I did, I was sick and I didn't feel good. So instead of canceling the stream, I let Fatal Fury 2 run throughout all the night while I went to sleep. And the charity stream was still going on with people that wanted to donate if they wanted to. But I couldn't be there to interact. So I kind of got that idea of these chill streams now. Plus Goblin doing his stream of his past streams, which is where I came up with Streamception. And so that's why I do what I do now. Um, but yeah, I remember those eight-hour streams you did. And uh, that really takes some... Uh, that could take some mental energy, does it? I mean, you got to really probably slam a Red Bull or something or five-hour energy and then get, get another five-hour energy to down real quick <laughs> and then before you continue. Because some, some of those streams you also did with your son. So there's a lot of talking, a lot of playing, interacting. That can take some energy to do. Yeah, and I don't deny that sometimes when I need a boost, you know, I'll step away for like a moment and slam an energy drink or, or a cup of coffee or something and... You know, I try to keep it very minimal, especially when it was just me in the beginning, because I didn't, I, I'm not professionally set up to, to stream as much as I'd like to be, and I'm definitely going to be working on that. So I don't really have like a, a be right back kind of screen or standing by kind of screen. It was always just, you know, hey, I'm going to disappear for a moment and then come back and then just jump right back into it. And there were times where I didn't even eat either and uh, as soon as i stepped away from the stream real quick i was like oh man what the hell's going on and it would just it would hit me because now i'm realizing it so uh doing the charity streams i've i've done those a lot better than i have in the past and i'm looking to go back to my my seven plus streams if i don't break those up uh once we get the new game room situated uh, but it does take a little bit of it does take a little bit of help sometimes um also, of course, make sure you get your, your rest prior because <laughs> that'll definitely have a hindrance on it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. That's yeah. so relatable because I've done it. <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen people like streamscheme.com. They give advice on people that want to do those 24-hour streams, which mm -hmm. um, I tried. No, that's, that's what it was. It wasn't a charity stream. It was a 24-hour stream I was trying to go for, and I wasn't feeling good. Like, I was feeling a little sick, and... Mega Dan's like, well, man, if you don't feel good, just stop. You're not even talking right now. You're not, you're not even talking. You can do this some other time. And I said, well, I'm going to let the stream run with my, my night bot saying, I'm not here. I'm not around right now, guys, but feel free to talk and hang with each other or whatever. And I have the phone next to my bed to check any activity, which is basically what I do now with these days is just let the stream run on its own, have some game loop over and over again, and to check the chat, the activity in the chat room. That because I was trying to do a 24 hour stream, well, the longest it ended up lasting because I, I got up the next morning, I felt better, and and I wanted to eat, so I was eating and still trying to interact with people, maybe type in the chat room. But I got to the point where I didn't want to stream anymore, like I, I stopped at like 17 hours and I wanted to stop streaming. But that's where I found out YouTube does not archive your stream past 11 or 12 hours. It, mm -hmm. it cuts off after 11, 12 hours. So the rest of my stream was not shown, which I didn't really care. It was just mainly a lot of game footage, fighting game footage, Fair Fury 2 or whatever. 
And that's how I discover that, oh, okay, the cutoff time is 11, 12 hours after it gets archived. I think your watch time hours still count beyond that because if people were still watching beyond that, it would still add up in the algorithm. But in the archive videos, it would not go past 11, 12 hours. Mm-hmm. And that's true. I mean, a 24 hour yeah. stream, unless you do it the way I do it, have footage loop in OBS and then, uh, Every eight hours, the footage loops over again or whatever. Of course, anybody can do that. But to do a, a real 24-hour stream where you're there interacting the entire time, they they recommend that you really prepare yourself for that. I think a few days in advance, get like if you're going to start your stream at 7 p.m., get eight hours of sleep before then, and then wake up at like 5 or 6 p.m., eat and get, and get your stream set up and everything. And after the 24-hour stream is over, and of course, sleep, get some rest, and take three days off of streaming. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. yeah. And I don't know if I'm gonna ever do it like that, unless someone's with me, and we're both eating and drinking during that time or whatever. But other than that, if I do a 24-hour stream, it's gonna be how I do it, chill stream style, where I'm not even there. <laughs> but mm-hmm. I, because I mean, and plus, I don't think I can do that here in Mexico anyway. The power goes out every so often. The internet connection gets dis- con- uh, discontinued, disconnected often so i can't i don't think my stream or or the internet or the power can handle it here anyway and <laughs> where i live mm-hmm. at so um but yeah i noticed you did those streams and i'm like yeah that takes some dedication i mean if you're gonna really really stream for real and be there the entire time yeah yeah and i i won't i won't deny that there are some times where i could definitely feel my energy going down but the the um the enthusiasm for streaming and just the the drive kicks in all of a sudden and it just i just keep going more and more and that's how i get through my my actual toys for tots streams um it, when i get to the the 24 hour marks or so it's just i start really really hitting it and then by then it's like okay do i stop do i pass that one minute extra past the goal you know what do i do and and just try to just try to stay afloat. Make sure that um anybody who is actually still in the chat, I I keep them entertained somehow. And as long as the donations are are coming in, you know I take game requests and all that. And I also post pictures on on Twitter and now Instagram since I'm on there of what uh, what we collected. And it's usually for Toys for Tots. So I'll take a picture of everything that we purchase, and that way everybody can see what we put all the donations towards and then uh, my girlfriend and I will match the donation amounts on top of that so that's an added boost for for everyone who's participating in the program and I'm hoping to do more with that that way I can just you know do something else besides say thank you to everybody who participated whether they were just in the stream or not or yeah they donated uh, because I feel like that's for sure yeah yeah, so when I've done charity streams, I would kind of hit the wall after like the seventh or seven and a half hours. I would tap out a little early and be like, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm done, guys. It's, it's been close to eight hours. I think we're going to get all the donations anyway. That's probably it for the night. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'd be tired. I would do those <laughs> streams all the way to like from 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. I think the last charity stream I probably ever did, I got to go back and look, but I think it was uh, Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3 and and Lost Levels. And I only mm-hmm. got like to World 4 and Lost Levels and it was like seven and a half hours by that point and no one was really interacting or watching so I don't feel as motivated if not many people are reacting or, or watching. The view count is real low and no one's really commenting. And so that's like me saying, all right, guys, so I, I think we're going to get all the donations. I haven't got much donations anyway but for charity stream but when I kind of think like it's reached the, the stream has reached its, uh, I don't know what you call it, ran its course. And mm-hmm. I got like only an hour, 30 minutes left. I kind of cut off early. And I kind of figured out, well, what's the point? I've gotten this far and uh, the stream's kind of died out anyway. And I'm tired. <laughs> right. So, um, and that that's completely understandable. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it can be tough, uh, I'll admit, because when I first started streaming, uh, I was streaming around one o'clock two o'clock in the morning my time and i maybe saw two familiar names every so often and i used to stream for about two hours at the most um and then i would just head to bed after that so sometimes yeah you can you can kind of feel that and experience that but 
uh, I always remind myself why I do it. And as long as I'm having fun and just having that energy, you know, I'll keep going. Uh, as a matter of fact, with, with the, the charity stream, and most of us are, are doing those now or are going to attempt those, from what I understand, for the first time this year, I've actually thought about, well, if we all wanted to get together, those of us who are interested, maybe do one big charity stream, and then we just kind of like take turns in intervals and just pass it on to the next guy. So as long yeah. as we know who's going to be streaming from, like, let's say I'll do the first part of the charity stream from 8 in the morning to about 5 in the afternoon or evening, and then somebody else jumps in, so on and so forth. Uh, because I think that's been a really big motivational factor in our in our community, whether you stream retro or not. A lot of people are looking to do charity streams. So... I think it'd be really cool if we all kind of like banded together and just like either did one big one or we just did multiple charities uh, of our choice. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. That's that's a good idea. I'll be I'll be down for that. Sounds cool. All right. Uh, look at my list here. Uh, oh yeah, I was just actually about to ask you: Are you going to continue to do your Sunday streams again? Definitely. Uh, we want to we want to improve the quality of the streams as we've been doing with the quality of my videos. So we do want to make it more professional. I'm going to be looking into getting better equipment when finances allow that. And then, of course, uh, once we get the the gaming room done, because that's been the biggest hurdle ever since we moved, is trying to find time to work on this and, and actually get it the way that we kind of envisioned it, even though we still have very limited space. You know, we really want it to to look like a like a mini archive of sorts. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, that's pretty far out. Yeah, do, and do you plan to stream with your son again? Uh, if his behavior improves. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like, and we also got to be careful of Kaba and all that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah um, Kaba. As much as he enjoys streaming, and he. He loves talking to everybody that uh, watch we watch a stream of. He always thinks that we can interact with you all the same way that you all interact with us. And I have to remind him, they can't hear us, buddy. You know, we can only type to them or we can talk to them when we stream, but they can't really hear us. Yeah. Uh, so as much as he loves doing that and playing the games, he really likes to be on camera, too. And unfortunately, I've explained to him there's a lot of reasons why that can't be allowed. Yeah. So anymore at this time. Mm hmm. Yeah. So yeah. at least while we're off camera, you know, he'll he'll stream and uh, he'll stream with me in the meantime when when I allow him to, because he's had some behavioral problems in the past. But, yeah. you know, no kid, no kid is perfect. So right. um, he, he's looking forward to streaming Pokemon Yellow again and. Just kind of, you know, being able to chat with everybody because I think that's his favorite part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's your favorite stream that you have ever done? Like Probably the the second um, Toys for Tots stream I did because we had so much traffic that day, and there was just a lot going on. We 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 passed the previous donation amount, and uh, there was just a lot of different people coming in and, and throwing the stream out there. We had uh, Billy from the Game Chasers pop in, and he made some donations and was trying to shout out the, the charity stream for me. And uh, a few others. Uh, everybody just kind of came and went when they could. It was just very, it was a really well-energized event. And between playing all the requests that I had and just chatting with everybody, seeing everybody come in, it was probably the best streaming experience I had at that point. I remember when I was getting ready to do my 13th anniversary live stream, you did a stream dedicated to me uh, for mm -hmm. that. And that was pretty cool. And I, when I did the stream, it was eight hours, I believe. Yeah. And it was, I had 20 concur concurrent viewers at one point. That's the most concurrent viewers I ever had in the stream on YouTube. And on Twitch, I had like 40 something at one point. That's because of auto small streamers connect auto hosting me. And on, Mixer had 80 something views. That's because of um, small streamers connect again. But as far as like, with no, nobody uh, hosting or rating me, 
like uh, just people coming in. I, I I saw the 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 final results and it said 20 concurrent viewers at one. I remember during the stream too when I first started it, I was like, whoa, you know, 20 concurrent viewers. That's the most I ever had. And usually Ace and Mega Dan can get that almost every night. It seems like, but for me, that was like a big deal because like mm -hmm. I got 20 that time and that was pretty cool. Yeah, and never never sell yourself short. You know, don't don't. I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of up and coming new YouTube, uh, YouTubers do is they they feel that if they're not making those numbers right away that they must be terrible or they're just not doing something right. I would stream even if I had nobody in my stream. I'd talk to myself even. I would yep. not care. Yeah, me too. I, yeah. I kind of did that the other night. <laughs> well, you, Mega Dan, and Fear came into my chill stream where I was on the phone, um, and that was it. <laughs> That was in one hour and only 58, 59 minutes of watch time hours total, uh, that mm -hmm. one hour. And I had – but there was a period where no one was talking anymore, and, and the view count said zero. And I was talking to myself for a good while, I think, for mm -hmm. pretty much the rest of the stream. And I said, right now, like some people will get frustrated at, at this right now, but me, I don't care. I'm still talking even though no one's watching. You might think, well, what's the point? Well, maybe because you like doing it. And you never know. Someone – could come in and hear you right before the view count hit, hits one again because it takes a few seconds for that up that view count to update you know someone could be coming in and uh some people could even watch the replay and i mean i mm -hmm. remember someone gave advice about twitch streamers saying how to stream to no viewers well keep on streaming as if someone is watching you because exactly. some, someone could be watching you and, and then get entertained by what you're saying and not just doing and yeah so and to me sometimes that can be hard if no one is interact, I'm an introvert, and I kind of I, sometimes I guess I uh, I think it's what extroverts do. Extroverts draw energy from other people, and sometimes I can be an extrovert at heart. So, uh, I think for the most part I kind of lean more toward intro introvert. But if I, if there's no one in the chat and I'm playing a game or doing a chill stream and there's no one talking or interacting or saying hi or anything, I don't. I may not have nothing to say at that moment, so I'm I kind of don't know what to say or know, or, uh, know what to do like someone would have to come in and actually ask me a question or say hey how's it going or whatever but if there's a period when no one's really talking or acting that's where i could get quiet that it can get challenging to continue talking almost non-stop in a stream especially when there's no one that's really interacting with you that can be kind of a challenge to me but i don't let it get to me i'm like yeah you know what whatever it could be still still be a chill stream at this point until people start talking which i don't mind people lurking you know, again, I said this before, I don't mind people lurking in my streams because some people may not feel like talking. They might want to chill, might want to lurk. And sometimes mm -hmm. I might ask a question, I don't know if Megadan's still there, but hey, do you remember this? But he might be in the, in, taking a shower listening and can't respond at the moment. Mm -hmm. I don't want him to right. jump, jump out. Hold on, I just washed my hands and dry my hair real quick, buddy. Uh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> like, no, you just answer the question next time you, <laughs> you're able to type or whatever. But I don't, some people were pressured they're lurkers. Man, you got I got 10 people watching. There's only three people talking. Y'all say something. Like, I don't think that's mm -hmm. cool. I don't no. think that's cool. And, no, cause, and I think you actually, I think it was you, Ron, or someone else had said during one of your chill streams that nobody owes you anything Exactly. when, when, when you're watching or when you're streaming, nobody owes you anything. Yeah. So true. very true. Sort of like how people don't uh, deserve to join your discord if they don't want to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like some people will say, but, but I support them. They need to support me. Well, I mean, yes. And yes and no like it's nice to give back and i like to show support to those who support my channel obviously but at the same time i don't think people should be feel obligated to subscribe to you if if, if they don't like your content for example somebody on youtube i mean they might do not even video game related content they might do something that you don't necessarily care about they might talk they might talk about politics or something or they may talk about race cars or something that that you may not be interested in but the, yet they subscribe to your channel and show you support and drop a like and come in the stream. And that's cool, but I don't want to feel obligated to subscribe to them uh, just because they subscribe to me. I feel like people should only sub to you if, if they really want to. And I know there's YouTube channels out there that might uh, – like they, they do a sub for sub, but I don't even, even want to even say it's sub for sub. But like they may show you support, and I might check out their channel and be like um, – 
okay, they seem to do content that I might be interested in. I'll watch one of their videos real quick, and then, you know, I may drop a sub here and there and come back to their channel later. But some people straight up do sub for sub. And, of course, YouTube will unsub you these days if you do not watch at least 5 or 10 minutes of a video first and then subscribe. I think as YouTube was detecting the sub for sub people. And I don't want, really want my subscriber count to be fake. And mm -hmm. Very true. And some people get mad saying, man, you know, I support y'all. Like someone had tweeted a while back, if your name is not on this list, then go F yourself. And he put like a, a few people on that list. And, uh, the oh, yeah, and sort of like what Zombie was saying a moment ago, and it's like, oh, man, you got a long way to learn, bro. Yeah, and he, he apparently that person's frustrated, like saying, um, man, I come to their streams, and no one's coming to my streams, and, uh, and I support those same people, but they don't come to my streams. It's like, well, I mean, look, sorry, that's too bad. I mean... Some people, there are times where, whether it's a chill stream or a stream where I'm actually playing a game and interacting, hardly no one would come into my streams. And it's stiff competition out there. Like, if I'm streaming and Mega Dan's streaming, more people are going to flock to his channel. That's just how it is. And, or, mm -hmm. I mean, and so it's, it's it, it, that's just how it is. It's nothing personal. Like, I'll watch somebody, oh. I'll watch a streamer for a little bit, and then I might see somebody else that's on I won't necessarily, and no one has to let me know anything, and I don't have to let them know anything. I'll just, I'll either stream nothing personal. I want to go see this other person stream because they're streaming a game that I want to see them stream. And mm -hmm. so some people are, come off a little bit entitled, and I don't want to come off like that at all. And any streamer that does, or if they, or here's what I kind of hate: like some streamers will give ultimatums, like, "All right, guys." I'm not going to turn on the microphone. They'll have it in the chat room. Microphone is off until I get at least $20 donation in this stream. Yeah. I, I'm not I, a fan of that. I don't, I don't like that. That's kind of like an ultimatum. Like, look, man. Like, see, that's why when I become a member, if I do get monetized on YouTube, if I become a member, uh, if, I, if, if I'm enabled... How, how can I say it? I think I'm drunk right now. Uh, <laughs> if I can enable Having memberships... Having cell pockets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I if I can enable memberships on my channel when I get monetized, that's why I decided. And there's nothing wrong with people that want to have members only perks. I get it because they're paying. They maybe you know they deserve maybe a little bit of extra perks. But like regardless, I'm not gonna give an ultimatum. Like, all right, guys, I don't feel like being on cam tonight. But if you want me to, just donation of twenty dollars. Like, mm -hmm. or uh, be on camera, $20 or $10 donation or whatever. Or someone one time even stopped streaming because they said they were streaming for two hours and they got no donations. I'm like, well, I mean, you know, that's... that's that, that's like the whole definition of being a Kyle or a Karen. And it's like, dude, don't be so entitled. Yeah. yeah. And it is their stream. They can do whatever they want on their stream. But at the same time, that's going to really turn people off. It would turn me off. I unsubscribed for somebody one time that said, I'm not turning on the microphone until I get at least $20. I'm like, all right, well, I'm out of here then. Because that comes off as entitled. And it's not the fact that they're not streaming on mic. I've watched streamers that don't stream on microphone. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. It's not the most popular way of streaming. But if people want to stream that way, that's fine. Like, a lot of times I don't feel like being on camera. Some people right. don't feel like talking on the mic. And like Jimmy from Games, Moves, and Comics or Us, most of the time he don't really talk on the mic. But he does when, when he feels like it certain times. He never gives ultimatum. I, well, I think he kind of did one time, but he didn't do it in a way that seemed entitled. He, I think he said his goal was to, once he reached 500 subscribers again because he has started a new channel, he was on turn on the mic. And to me, I was thinking, well, I mean, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But I mean... But he didn't come off like really, really entitled. Like some people can be like, like especially when it comes to money. Uh, I'll turn on the mic, guys, if you give me uh, five, ten dollars or whatever. I'm like, nope. Uh, I'm out of here because I don't know if I'm going to like this channel. If they're going to be demanding stuff, you mm -hmm. know. And yeah, so, and it's kind of like that one person that made fun of your username that one time. Oh, I remember that. Well. I told that story before. Like um, for those who didn't hear it, I, 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 I forgot. I'm not going to mention their name anyway, but I don't remember their channel, but I had subscribed to them, I guess, like, subscribed to them and planned to come back and check out more of their content. I came into the stream one night, and they, they were playing uh, Rocket League, I think, and uh, I said, I said, hey, what's up? And then they said, Ron Moore, what the f is up with your name, dude? 
and went back to playing the game, didn't acknowledge me. I thought he was mm-hmm. going to be joking around, like, no, I'm just messing with you, man. How you doing? But no, mm-hmm. he kept on playing with whoever he was playing with online, and I just sat there like, really, dude? And I just wrote, hey, that's okay. I don't even know who you are anyway. And I don't subscribe from him. Mm-hmm. And, but yeah, like, even if you're thinking that, like, I understand you coming in with a weird name. I might say something like, hey, that's an interesting name, but hey, how you doing? But I wouldn't be like, mm-hmm. man, uh, Bushida Blade or Small Tummy Wonderful. I mean, what the <laughs> f- is up with your name, dude? Is your stomach little? You need to eat something? Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, my name is famous for it. And that's why I'm like, okay, I'm tired of this name and the algorithm on YouTube screwing me over. I'm changing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you have to really be respectful to your streamers. Like, Mega Dan even goes through the trouble of stopping the gameplay and giving a, an applause to someone that's new to his stream. And I think that's pretty cool, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, uh, I mean, but yeah, some streamers I've noticed that they just, uh, they can kind of make you feel unwelcome, uneasy in some ways. Like, man, Hey, if you stop lurking. You need to say something or, uh, what's up with your username or, or whatever. Like someone told me one time in a, in a Twitch stream, and it wasn't the host, but it was one of the other chatters. Hey, Ron Moore, uh, do you got some Ron Samo and stuff like that? I don't care. You know, like, ha, mm-hmm. I get it, you know, ha, ha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but when the when the actual host would be like, um, what, like, I get it if they're thinking, that's kind of a weird name, but whatever. But to actually say that, uh, like, uh, that, that's totally disrespectful. Like, why would you disrespect your viewers like that unless you're joking with them and you let them know you're, you're joking just in case they, they don't know you well enough? Mm-hmm. Right. And like, uh, you know, I have to, uh, if I do that, I have to let people know I'm joking with them if I say a certain thing. Like, uh, so like someone banned so and so from the chat because what? No, I think that's. No, obviously I'm joking. Like, no, don't do it. I'm just messing with you. But like, there, and I'm not going to mention this person's name. But if y'all, if y'all know who I'm talking about, don't mention their name either. But I, uh, recently just stopped watching this person because this person will ban somebody. And again, I understand it's their stream. They can do whatever they want. Just like if it's if someone comes to your house, they can kick you. You know, you can kick him out for any reason, even though it's a stupid reason. But this person will ban you if you mention certain games that he does not like. And I, th- <laughs> or he might not ban you, but he'll time you out at least. And I'm mm. like, I'm like, really? Like, I don't like that game either, but I'm not going to ban somebody or time somebody out. They mention it. I think that's petty. Like, Very what, petty. I, I, like people all like the different type of games. And if you're going to ban or time somebody out because of that, that I don't want to be a part of your streams anymore. I think that's ridiculous. Don't want to be a part of your toxic community. <laughs> yeah, or people will start talking about stuff they might want to... Again, as people stream, they can do whatever they want. But as far as me and my streams, I want to stay away from anything controversial like politics, face masks, vaccines, COVID, and all this stuff. Because it can really stir up a, a big, nasty argument in the chat. Oh, and, absolutely. And I don't want... I want Very to, true. And I don't want to get into that if anybody starts talking about politics or the vaccine or whatever i'm like yeah all right guys let, let's 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 stop talking about this because it's going to get ugly you know you have you have your opinions that's fine but and some people some streamers will get mad and ban somebody that may disagree with the vaccine or is all for the vaccine i'm like really guys <laughs> we're going to ban people for this for for all this stuff like and i get like that's why i don't I'd rather have not talk about those things Let's talk about video games. We could talk about other stuff. We could talk about wrestling, of course, because me, you know, wrestling. We can talk about sports or other things, you know, that's not controversial or personal. That I try to stay away from politics, religion, and all that stuff in the streams because it can get ugly, and if people start oh, arguing. So ugly. And mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to stay away from that stuff. I can I can definitely relate to that because those are definitely two, three, four of the most controversial topics at at the time. And I remember uh during my during my streams I used to have the the Zom Talk segments where I just go on camera and just chat a little bit with everybody, kinda kick back, relax, uh, break away from gaming. And I I tested the waters with that and I let someone make a comment uh, I believe about religion, and I kind of just, you know, let it see where it was going to go, make sure that if it got way out of hand that we instantly squash that. But I think if you know who who your viewers are and who is in the community with you, you can still, 
you can kind of have that that type of conversation so long as everybody remembers that hey let's just be respectful everyone's uh, entitled to their opinions but we're not here to bash we're not here to insult anybody for their choices because everybody is entitled to them right. and it led to some really good uh, to some really good conversation where a lot of us were really starting to uh, apply what we know about religion, whether it's our backgrounds or what we've studied. And I think that within the confines of who your audience is, you probably will be okay if you kind of want to open the floor with that a little bit. But I definitely don't blame anyone who wants to avoid those those hot topics because, yeah, I've seen how just even the mentioning of something just blows everything out of proportion and then it's like oh great there goes the stream now because then all this arguing starts happening and yeah yeah i'm I'm a little i guess i'm a little risk taking in that in that regard but i i can definitely relate to the uh the concern with talking about any of that yeah and i, I like i don't mind if like people make political jokes as long as they're not trying to like make a uh a, a joke with with a narrative like for example, you know whether you support Trump or not. Like if if I was playing a game and I was trying to tear down a wall, I'd make a, a Trump joke. I'm playing as Trump now, so I got to protect this wall because this wall's gonna be huge or whatever. Some like some lighthearted political joke, you mm -hmm. know, and that's fine. But like if people start, people can make a political joke, but it's attacking a political figure in a malicious way, and that's gonna trigger somebody. And I'm like, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, if we're gonna make jokes, that's fine, but let's be unbiased with the jokes. You know, yeah. like, you know, like kind of like, yeah. uh, like South Park makes fun of everything and everybody. Yes. They don't Perfect target example. a specific political uh, agenda. They don't target Pacific, uh, Pacific, uh, I say Pacific, yeah, the Pacific Ocean. Mm. Uh, they, <laughs> they target the Pacific Ocean. No, they, they, mm. they don't target Pacific. a specific political figure. They attack everyone and everything. I maybe I don't know if I should say attack, but like they make fun. If you understand, oh, yeah. of everything and 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 like if 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 it's funny, you know they're gonna make fun of it. They they're not gonna like be some like some of these shows like Saturday Night Live or whoever that will you can tell they're attacking political figures or certain people based on their religious or political beliefs. I'm like mm -hmm. guys, be unbiased and let the jokes be actually funny. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, but yeah, as far as me yeah. and my streams, I like to keep it pretty much poli political politically free. Mm -hmm. Unless you're make, making a lighthearted political joke. Like I was dying in Gallagher and I said, oh, man, that's messed up. Oh, come on, man. And that was like a joke about Biden and why Chromosome got it. He goes, ha, ha, Biden, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that is fine. And um, Have you come under any of that with any of your streams? Have you, have you had anybody kind of break out into fights like that? Uh, oh man, my Persona 5 uh, royal streams. That <laughs> one was a minefield because of one person came in and then all of his haters came into my stream and one of his haters started posing as him, hitting on me, and I'm like, oh, oh gosh. Boy. Oh man. A lot of chaos. And uh -huh. it made me very uncomfortable, so I only streamed for about 90 minutes with that, and then... Uh, ended the stream because it just affected the flow. I really just couldn't feel it at that time. Yeah, and to me, like, I never really had, like, anybody, or I never got, like, bombarded with trolls or someone coming in or whatever. Like, me and my moderators are kind of not too quick to ban or time out, but at the same time, not put up with too much of it either. Like, I, I, I wouldn't, uh, I'm not going to let, like, anybody make me in the stream early. I'm going to keep streaming for uh, until for the intended goal, like, maybe two hours or whatever, or until I beat the game. And, mm -hmm. yeah, because, I mean, like, there's some other streamers where a few trolls will come in, and then the streamer will be like, all right, yeah, I'm done with this. Like, I'm, I think, well, why? Just ban them. You have the power to ban them. Now, granted, maybe people can make many sock puppet accounts and come in and... and Oh yeah, I've seen that done. And like, and, oh, I, and I get it. Maybe they don't feel like dealing with all that. But to me, if that would have happened, I would just like maybe ignore the what's going on in the chat for the most part, and the moderators just do the best they can. And I keep streaming like like nothing happened because that's pretty much what they want you to do. They want to make you maybe quit, quit, rage quit, or make you react in a certain way. 
And mm-hmm. I still remember the, the uh, one particular troll. It was funny because uh, I think Goblin banned him. Danny had timed him out several times, but he wouldn't shut up. And Yeah, and every five minutes he would come back. And Goblin would finally end him, so to speak, uh, as far as like banning him from the chat. Like He got mad because I was cheating in Super Mario Bros. 2. I was using invincibility, and I was up front about it. I wasn't trying to hide it because I was having controller lag. And um, the guy was like, "Man, wh- why are you cheating? Stop you! Stop cheating. cheating!" And then, uh, and then, uh, kept on saying, uh, "Just kind of being douchey." And then uh, he said, I, can't, "I just can't stand with douchebags like this cheat." And uh, mm-hmm. I, and Gob- Goblin finally banned him and said, "It's okay to express your opinions on this, but there's better ways to do it." And then plus, the yeah. guy would just not shut up. That's yeah. It's kind of like that one person that we used to know had criticism and would always criticize me whether I'm playing from my Wii U or PS4 just to play Persona 5 Royal. And I was like, okay, you made your opinion. You can yeah. shut up about your opinion. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, like, backseat gamers, I don't mind if people help me, but then there's douchebag backseat gamers that's like, man, how can we not go in this way? Man, you suck. I could beat this in one hour. It's taking you this long to get through this level. Oh man, I could man, I could beat this game. I beat this game when I was four years old, blindfolded. Like, like okay, good for you, but shut up. <laughs> well, I hate to yeah, really I don't tell think people we care, or I don't think anyone cares. And, right. And I know, like, what's my opinion? Yeah, that what well, this it gets beyond giving an opinion. That's where they they just want to troll you now and stuff. And like, it's one thing to say like, uh, if people want to help me, unless I specifically say not to, that's fine. But and some people aren't. They mean well. Like, uh, I think one time Mazen said, how come you're not using your axe in Castlevania? Or how come you're not doing this? I, I kind of like that question because it, it makes me think, like, um, the question, like, well, why do you think I'm not using it? Maybe because I I didn't know you could do this. Or, I didn't, or, or like, some people would say, how come you didn't go in that one door on the left? Oh, because I didn't know there was a door up there on the left. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I, just, I just hate when people ask you, how come you're not doing this? How come you're not doing it? Because I didn't think about it. or Or I didn't know you could do that. Like I prefer people right. to say, "Hey, uh, hey, Ronnie, you can you can actually go up to that door in the left and then get out of this maze." Oh, okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. And like Mazen said, "Oh, I'm sorry. Please accept my ECW apology." Because I was like, <laughs> I kind of like, I, I think I said something like, "Well, I don't know, Mazen. Geez, I didn't know you could." That's why Mazen's great. Mazen's cool. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And so I knew Mazen didn't mean anything, in, or like Dim Guts. Y'all remember Dim Guts? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, oh, I know Dim Guts. He's pretty. Guts cr- rage. But I was doing a uh, uh, a blind run of Snake Eater, and I was playing Ooh. on very easy. And he uh, he saw it on there on the save screen. He goes, "Very easy. You need to nut up, Ron." And that kind of made me. <laughs> I, I go. I said, "Well, first of all, this is a blind run. Second, if you want those get good people, we're not going to get along." And after that, he kind of got quiet and didn't say anything for the rest of the stream. <laughs> but later on, we nice. joked about it, and I think Megadan stream, and he goes, "Yeah, that's that's before Ronnie got to know me and my personality. I wasn't really messing. With, I wasn't really being malicious with him. I was just joking with him. But I, I wasn't sure about him yet. I thought he was being one of those people, like, man, you need to play it on normal, hard. I can't stand people that say get good and all that stuff. I don't put up with those t- those people in my streams. That's kind of like the thing with Spectre and everything." <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, Reverend Spectre. It's not just about get good, get good. Get well, good. F you. F you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I love Reverend Spectre's video to this day. He talks about cheating in single player games. Like, if it's your stream and it's your game, go ahead and cheat if you want to. Not everybody can get through a game, but they just want to have fun and mess around. Like, whenever, yeah, I, whenever yeah. I stream GoldenEye, most of the time I'm going to add all those cheats. It's fun, and I'm not good at Golden Eye anyway. And this is the, I may put that in the in the title saying this ECW mode, which means cheat run. And I, now everybody's gonna understand what that means unless they're a fan of my channel. But I put ECW mode, same thing with Metroid on NES. I can't beat that game legit, so I cheat. I use Narpus Sword or ECW mode. And some mm-hmm. people will come to the stream and they don't like that. Well, I I can understand they don't like to watch it because they want to see people beat a game legit. But if you don't like it, that's fine. You can just, you know, you can you can leave and watch someone else that would play it legit. But me, like, you know, I'll, I'll play a game, I'll cheat in a single-player game. And people might, well, so, I haven't had this problem many times, but people will come in like, oh, man, why are you cheating? Play it legit. And I tell them, I don't feel like it. I want to cheat and have fun. No, man, you're not a real gamer. Like, oh, shut up, dude. Let me stream and play the game how I want. And... I mean, you know, at least I'm upfront about it, not trying to hide it and trying to fool you people and thinking I'm good at the game. No, I'm just straight up like, yeah, I'm cheating, guys. Here we go. 
I'm doing a cheat mm -hmm. run here. And now if it's if I was cheating in a multiplayer game like Call of Duty or if I was cheating against a second player, you know, uh, sitting next to me playing a game and I was using some sort of cheats and being sneaky with it, then that's different. That's not cool. But if you're playing a, a, a single player game to yourself, you just want to get through a game because you can't but you yet still want to get showcase the whole game on stream and just have fun and there's nothing wrong with that but that, that one person yeah. did not did not like it <laughs> when i was using invincibility uh on super mario brothers 2 which i can beat legit by the way but that one night i was having controller lag and i was still having a challenge because of the platforming and the pit disc because of my controller lag and i said i'm going to even out the difficulty here i'm going to put turn on invincibility and that one guy his username was he's probably some regular sock puppet account troll or whatever i don't think he does any content he goes and his his username is enjoy it bro and any, enjoy it bro and nes addict was in there he goes hey ronnie he's not enjoying it bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's why i love goblin and nes addict because those two are priceless in the chat yeah or ecw addict or actually, that's me. That's more so me than him. But, that's more you. Yeah, right. Yeah, I should change my name to ECW Addict. Now, fear the now fear the uh, pack changed his name to ECW Gamer three sixteen. So that's kind of yep. cool. But I still call him Fear because it's easier to yeah, say I, Fear than ECW Gamer or or ECW. Well, he's also still Fear on Discord, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Zombie, the last question I have for you, then I'll turn it over to Danny, um, and because I know this has happened to you a lot. Um, I'm not going to lie, I've done it before too, forgive me, but how many times have you been misgendered on stream? Oh, quite a bit. Um, I don't want to say to the point that I'm numb to it because I don't want to make it sound like I don't care, but it happens at least, um, probably once or twice a stream, depending. Um, it's become so much of a, of a running gag that I, I actually welcome that. Because yeah. at at least within at least within the confines of YouTubing and streaming, a lot of people aren't ever gonna really meet me in person, aren't ever really gonna have a chance to interact with me outside of that. So I'm way more forgiving about it and uh than I am with somebody I know in real life or somebody I meet walking down the street or, you know, whatever I'm doing. Um early on I used to really get angry with that and I used to think, well, what am I doing wrong? What is it like? What is it about me that that leads to that? And this was before I had long hair, so I knew that having long hair wasn't really going to change anything. Um, but it happens. It happens a few times every now and then. And I know that people are so embarrassed when they do. They're 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 like really apologetic, and I just brush it off because I want them to be at ease about it. I want them to know that. It happens so much that I'm I'm kind of, you know, expecting that to happen. And if anybody's curious, you know, they're they're willing and and are wanting to ask questions about that. I, I'm open to I'm open to talk about it. It's not a big hindrance for me, and it's led me to it's led me to kind of speculate what it is that people either expect of me or would want of me. Rather than just, it's just easier to to put a label on you, you know, and it's all it's all actually information that I'm hopefully going to be putting into a a, a non fictional piece once I get the time to start working on it on what it's like to be uh, misgendered and kind of seen from both sides of the spectrum and. Where does society feel comfortable with me being in versus what I'm comfortable with? And it's just a big philosophical piece uh, in general. But like I said, it's it's not a big deal. Somebody says it usually once or twice. Sometimes people forget. It's not a big deal. Yeah, and I I mean, when I, when I first heard you talk, I, I, you know, I assumed I knew that you were a man. But when I saw you on stream for the first time, it threw me off. I go, wait, oh shoot, because the hair. It was the hair. <laughs> it was really that. It was the hair, and I go, ah, oh, wait a minute. Um, and I went sure, and then uh, I think uh, I heard you in your stream one day. You had mentioned that. Yeah, I get misgendered all the time. It happens. I'm like, oh, it's just not not just me then. And yeah, it's really not. <laughs> yeah, and uh, but yeah. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Danny. Danny's got about fifty questions for. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. 
Um, hey, you got time way. to play 50 questions, bro. <laughs> <laughs> 20 but, questions uh, of Bobber Walters. No. From <laughs> 2020. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and rather. <laughs> so, um, my first question is, what is it like to be a gaming beautician, exactly? Well, the gaming beautician was just a moniker I came up with because before I came back to streaming, um, and before I actually came back to Twitter, I started getting into restoration projects. And the reason why I did that was not only to to help my collection and also help me buy games and systems in the future, but I wanted to show people that it's actually one of the better ways to get deals out there. And also, with just a little bit of effort, you'd be surprised at what you can get your games and consoles to look like. So when I used to show before and after pictures, I used to use the word hashtag uh, beautified. And then I was just talking with some friends one day and I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like a gaming beautician because I, I take what people don't want and I make it look bright and beautiful again. And it's, it is kind of being like a, like a stylist, so to say. And it just stuck. It just became another handle for, for me to have as kind of like a, a side project. And just to let everybody know that there are people really dedicated to this, and it's actually become quite a passion project of mine to do. So whether I restore someone's items myself or I just give them inside tips on what's worked for me, that's really what it's all about is giving back to, to the community. No, that's really cool. I'm an ECW beautician. <laughs> oh, yes, that, you are. <laughs> oh, yes, you are, Ron. And what seems to be your favorite Mega Man game on any platform? Game Boy, NES, SNES, doesn't matter which one, but... It will always be two on NES. Heck yeah. Good choice. Always, yeah. always be two. That's... A pretty good choice. No wonder you and Ron get along so well. Yeah, me. Oh, we also have a love for Castlevania too, as well. Definitely. Oh yeah, Samus Quest, indeed. The almost sort of black sheep of the game, but Simon's Quest is actually a pretty good game. Yeah, depending it is. on the eyes and beholder of that said game. Well, even James Rolfe said he he kind of liked the game to a certain extent. Oh mm. yeah. And, oh yeah, Dark Moon likes Simon's Quest as well. Oh yeah, ECW Moon, I like him. Dark Moon's cool. I remember and, there was a time... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, <laughs> zombie. I was just going to say, there was a time period where uh, Ron, I believe Mazin, Captain Algebra, Lake Gaming, and a few others were all streaming... Castlevania 2 at different times really trying to bring awareness to the game and say, hey, despite what AVGN says and despite what other YouTubers say, this game is actually pretty good if you can get past some of the things that are deterrents from it and actually give it a try. Yeah, yeah. and uh, also cryptic as all heck, but yes, it's actually not that bad as everybody else says it to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't even trying to bring awareness. I just wanted to stream it because I wanted to stream it. Because I freaking love it, right. and I'm going to stream it again. Oh yeah, we'll yeah. all look forward to that, because it draws an audience. Yeah, it does. Oh, for sure. I love it. It's a great game, and it's a classic. Plus, it kind of made the trend of Metroidvania. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in one of my streams, you probably mentioned this before whenever I'm probably playing a said Pokemon game, but uh, what happens to be the best Game Boy game of Pokemon to be released on the platform? I would have to say Crystal. Yeah, that one's my favorite too. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> It and, not only has the best looking cart design in my opinion, but it encompasses everything that made Yellow good and then the sequels. For sure. And what else that makes it your favorite but in the game? Uh, I think just the the added bonuses of everything that you didn't expect the game to have because I remember playing 
the first time through, I think it was it was gold that I got first. And then they're like, oh, by the way, you actually get to go back to the first game, go through all of that, and then you meet the very final challenger. So I was really blown away by just how much they were able to put into that game. Yeah, for such tiny cards, because Gen 2 actually turned out to be pretty epic in ECW. Oh yeah, ECW Mon. Oh yeah. Pocket ECW Mon, I guess, <laughs> as I always put it for Ron streams here and there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, favorite Mega Man X game. Oh, that's tough. Um, I am going to lean towards Mega Man X, the first one. Yeah, that's probably our favorite too, because that's probably the easiest one to speed run compared to X two and three. I've only played the first three, and I like all three of them, but the first one is my personal favorite. It has the better soundtrack, in my opinion, too. Oh, the yeah, characters, definitely. Yeah, all of it seemed a lot better. Yeah. For sure. I remember I had, I... I've had dreams about that game before it came out, because I, I was anticipating it so bad. Oh, yeah. All right. Any more, oh. any more questions, Danny? Uh, let me think about that. Oh, favorite PS2 game or GameCube game? Let's see. GameCube game would probably have to be Smash Brothers Melee because oh. I invested so many hours into that. Um yeah. back when I was in college and also we used to run Smash Brothers tournaments <clears throat> and we had people from out of state actually come in for those. So probably Melee. Um I could argue that I I really liked the Resident Evil remake on there as well. Uh, as a as a standalone title. Oh yeah, I believe that. That's why I always was kind of stuck with the GameCube until I was like at least 17 or 18 before I actually got my PS2 and it's like... Uh, but I regret having to even deal with Mega Man X7. It's the <laughs> worst! <laughs> yeah... It is it is a tough, tough game to, to get through because of... It just doesn't compare to the previous X titles. And Yeah, I'm just glad Mega Man X 8 actually makes it a little bit better than Mega Man X 7. Mm -hmm. And I would much rather deal with the voice acting rather than X 7, even though I'll still play X 7 all the way through. But don't let me ever play X 7 against my will because there are so <laughs> many better games. Mm -hmm. If they ever make it to Mega Man uh, 30 or X uh, 30 or whatever, I'm going to call it a Mega Man Triple X, would that sound right? Uh, <laughs> no, Ron, I don't think that's okay. No. Right. <laughs> but they haven't even come out with Mega Man X 9 or X 10 because they've kind of neglected X for a little bit. Yep, yeah, they sure have. And a lot of the good Capcom uh, games on the PlayStation 2 have really taken a, a backseat. Like, I was really into Devil May Cry, even though I'm not a fan of 2 that much. I was into Onimusha, um, even though I wasn't a fan of 4. And, you know, we already know that Silent Hill is pretty much gone at this point. So yeah, because Konami is allergic to money. Yep. <laughs> I haven't played either Devil May Cry game, but I had heard part two, he sounds more emo. Like the main character. And all stoic and quiet, and it's better to just go with Devil May Cry 4, 3, and 1. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I saw a review a long time ago about 1 and 2, and the person reviewing it was talking about, why is he so cool, and... and uh, the, the way he talks, you know, he's a much better, more entertaining character in part one. Then in part two, he's coming off like more serious and emo. Mm -hmm. That's actually yeah. a pretty fair. That's a pretty accurate description. Yeah, and also Devil May Cry 5. That one turned out to be pretty good. Yeah, people like to have their criticisms about that one. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine called Castlevania 64 a, a poor man's or a weak-ass Devil May Cry. 
Um, <laughs> and, That's accurate. I and, can't even be mad about that. I can laugh about it. And I, I wrote back to him, uh, and I said, uh, hey, don't call it an angel may laugh. A weak angel may laugh, or whatever I said. I forgot. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's a good one. Because people and, know I love Castlevania, the Castlevania 64 games. I, re yeah. I admire you for that because I tried so hard to get behind those and I just, I can't do it. I, I respect their place in the timeline even though they're not officially canon. It's it's tough. <laughs> yeah, I know is probably the only one that is canon because I actually like Legacy of Darkness and I like Cornell and I like wolves and werewolves alike. Yeah. I was hurt by that. <laughs> <laughs> I was hurt by Cornell's design and everything. I was like, is he is he starving? <laughs> is yeah. he mal malnourished over <laughs> here? Like why couldn't he be a little more jacked? Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, that's right. Because you use John Telbane as your display pictures, and that's right. Yeah, you're a wolf kind of person too. Oh yeah, yeah, but yeah. Me too. I like they, they Telbane too. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you might end up in a body bag. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and how much do you know about the uh, original Xbox and what happens to be your favorite one on that console, even though it took me years to actually like an Xbox? Uh, I was in the same I was in the same boat coming off of the previous generation because I mostly knew Microsoft for their PC stuff. So to hear yeah. that they were throwing their name into the gaming scene, I was like, well, on the one hand, if they're using their PC technology, they might be some heavy competition. But on the other hand, it's like, well, are you going to downgrade to, to console technology if that's a thing? Or, like, what is your gain in all of that? And when I got to college, there was quite a bit of Xbox players. Most of them played Halo. Most of them were in their dorms doing LAN parties and stuff. <laughs> and that's where I got most of my information and my like for the for the system now i used to play halo a lot back in the day but i still finger pointed and said nope that's from the thing nope that's from aliens nope this and that and i'm like At microsoft you're not original stop saying you are uh, uh, right if only bill gates just stayed away from the console market <laughs> because yeah. if you're the pc master race stick to that Right. You're still part of gaming. Back off. And you know it was weird too because I saw a good mixture of of PC gaming still going on, but it just seemed more and more like it was phasing out. And I don't know if it's because I wasn't in the PC gaming realm like other people were because I didn't grow up with PC gaming at all. It was mostly console. So yeah. I was seeing little I was seeing less and less of that because back then People played Counter Strike. People played Aliens vs Predator Two. Uh, there were a few titles that were still going pretty strong. And then all of a sudden, it's just like nobody, nobody played it anymore. Even Call of Duty, which was legendary on the PC, or Medal like, of Honor. Yeah, Medal of Honor. Exactly. All these really top-notch PC series are either being ported to these home consoles, or it's like they don't exist. I hmm. think. Crisis may have been the last PC game I ever remember us getting on reserve from GameStop even. Mm, and GameStop. just <laughs> just just trying to figure out what was going on with that but um yeah, I I got to play a majority of the original Xbox and later the 360 because my roommates all had one except for me. So I didn't feel the need to go buy one, but I definitely thought the 360 was way above what the first xbox did but i re i respect its place in the in the technological boom because while yeah. P ps2 was still my console of choice xbox was a nice addition it was a nice variation and at the time i was kind of jumping between uh gamecube and playstation 2 because the 64 really didn't wow me and so i wasn't eager to jump to gamecube like i thought i would have yeah I mean, my first console was a PlayStation, and my second was an N64. Which, that's why I'm such a Nintendo or a very Sony-heavy person. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. Uh, yeah. Well, that answered about my 360 question. So PS3 and Wii are probably in my next ones. Yeah, go ahead. And I, I don't mean to cut it short, like, but uh, I think another storm's coming. I don't want to risk my power supply again. So, oh, yeah. So, yeah, go, right, right, <laughs> right now it's okay, but go ahead, Danny. Uh, so what happens being the grand selling point of PS3 and uh, Wii games that you happen to like on the console? Judging that I have uh, a lot more Wii games than I do PS3, uh, I definitely sided with the Wii between those two. Uh, the PS3 just had too many technical issues along with the 360 back in the day. So yeah, I kind the of... ring and the yellow ring of death. Right, and I strayed away from that. I wasn't about to go drop, you know, four or five hundred dollars on those systems when they were ready to die any second. Right. Uh, I, I totally hear that. So the Wii, the Wii brought me back to Nintendo, and I feel there's a lot more interesting games on that console, and ones that definitely deserve either a sequel or a remake. Yeah, like Castlevania Rebirth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure, even with the current-gen consoles from the Wii U and all that, I'm pretty sure we w would probably agree on, like, just about... Everything or half of everything that came out of that, or this generation. Yeah, Wii U, I think, unfortunately got what the the Sega 32X or even the Virtual Boy treatment uh, Ooh, might have yeah, gotten. brutal. It just, I, I felt like it was a system to kind of kill time, but I think if they had put a little bit more effort into making the Wii U into the Switch, there probably wouldn't be that weird gap in between everything. Very true. I think I'm done asking my questions. Uh, what do you think, Ron? Do you think we did a pretty good job here? No, I forgot to record. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> ECW prank, that's a good one. <laughs> I've done it before on SC2K. We joke with each other sometimes. Oh, I forgot to record. There was a time where we did forget to record, or Pamela's Skype recorder would not work. Like it was supposed to? Oh, that made oh. us so mad. Ugh, Skype. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Uh, but no, I think we're pretty much done here. But uh, Zombie, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate uh, you taking the time to let us interview you today. My pleasure. Anytime. Yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah, so throughout the week, I'm going to, and like I said, I'm going to kind of relax on the, the goal of monetization. But at the same time, since I'm close to the finish line, I'm going to still try to grind for that to at least give it a shot to see what YouTube says. If they approve me or not. Right now, I'm at 3,577 watch time hours. Yeah. So, I'm, mm. I'm pretty much going to make it, no uh, no doubt. But uh, And we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to also premiere my twi my past Twitch streams. And so, I know that this interview will be up way past that point. But like in less than an hour as of this recording, my Streets of Rage Twitch stream is going to premiere on YouTube. So, okay. mm -hmm. very and yeah, so uh, I'm going to be getting ready to watch that with, with whoever shows up in the chat. And I really appreciate you guys being here. Danny for helping out with the interview. And Zombie for being ECW. Of course, Zombie is one of the, uh, my biggest supporters. He's a loyal guy that really support you, help you out, do whatever you can to help your channel. And I really appreciate that. One of the OGs. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and where there's leaving a the lurk. And that's why I tell people, don't call out your lurkers. Let them lurk. Even if they're not watching you, that can still help your channel. I mean, it, it a, a, algorithmically, statistically, on Twitch, I think as well, it can really help you. A yep. view is a view, after all. Yep. Mm -hmm. Whether it's watch hours or comments, every little bit helps, and I'm grateful for that every time I stream. Yeah, for me sure. too. Definitely, me too. All right, guys, have a good night. We are out of here. I'm Ron Moore. God bless, and take care. Follow the black cat.